Hey guys, today we'll be covering a 2009 romance comedy film called Confessions of a Shopaholic. The opening scene starts with Rebecca Bloomwood, a New York journalist who has been a shopping addict since she was a child. She believes that a man will never love or treat a girl in the same way that a store does. Rebecca has always wanted to work for the fashion magazine Alette since she was 14. One day, her dream finally comes true and she is selected for an interview at Alette. She is over the moon and tells her best friend, Suze, all about it. On her way to the interview, Rebecca sees a green scarf in one of the stores and is immediately smitten with it. She tries to persuade herself not to spend any more money, but she ends up going to buy it. However, her credit card is declined. Despite this, she doesn't give up and walks to a hot dog stand and offers to buy all the hot dogs there with a check. In return, she asks the shopkeeper to give her a $20 rebate. The shopkeeper is skeptical, but Rebecca mentions that she needs the money urgently to buy a scarf for her ailing aunt. Despite all this, the shopkeeper refuses, but luckily, a man in the queue named Luke Brandon assists her with $20. Later when Rebecca arrives for the interview, she is informed that the position has already been filled internally. However, the receptionist informs her that a position with the magazine's successful savings is available. He also recommends that she enroll in it because it may turn out to be a ladder to a let magazine. Rebecca agrees and heads to the interview, only to discover that the interviewer, who happens to be the editor of the successful saving magazine, is the same person who lent her the $20. As a result, she quickly hides her scarf before going inside. There, Luke tries asking her serious questions, but Rebecca dodges all of them as she has no experience in it. She even lies about knowing several languages, but when Luke asks her to speak one, she changes the topic. Just then, Luke's secretary enters the room and returns Rebecca's scarf, blowing her cover. Embarrassed about the situation, she walks out without concluding the interview. Later, she returns to her usual workplace, but finds that it has gone bankrupt and is getting closed. Depressed, she tells Suze everything. Suze is concerned because Rebecca has a lot of debt. After that, they both get drunk and send letters to Alette as well as successful saving. In her intoxicated state, she sends each letter to the wrong magazine. The next day, Rebecca gets a call from Luke, who likes the letter she had intended to send for Alette and hires her. Although confused at first, Rebecca is thrilled that she has finally landed her dream job. She then begins working at Successful Savings, despite having no idea what the work is. Later, Luke takes her to a communication company's convention and tells her to ask the owner some hard-hitting questions. As Rebecca has no clue what to ask, Luke assists her with a query regarding how the corporation is able to pay out $24 million in bonuses even when the investors are in an 8% loss. When she asks the same question to the owner, he falls silent in front of the audience, creating doubt in the investors' minds. Luke then asks Rebecca to prepare an outline in order to explain the company's truth to the other investors. However, instead of doing her assignment, Rebecca goes to a clothing sale and buys numerous outfits for herself. At home, while scrutinizing a cashmere outfit that she recently purchased, she discovers that it is not 100% original and that she has been duped. This gives her an idea for her assignment, which she completes and submits to Luke. When Luke goes through it, he surprisingly likes it. He then asks her permission to publish the article under her name. Rebecca is hesitant to reveal her own name, so Luke creates one for her, the girl in the green scarf, which quickly becomes a hit. Everyone in the office, including the upper management, appreciates the article and compliments her on it. Surprisingly, her parents, who are unaware of her work, also advise her to read the girl in the green scarf's article, since it is excellent. With days passing by, the article becomes well-known on a global scale. Meanwhile, Rebecca receives repeated calls from her debt collector named Derek Smith, but she fakes it in front of Luke, saying that he is her ex-boyfriend who is pretending to be a debt collector. The next week, Rebecca and Luke attend an APA conference in Miami. There, she is lauded for her writings, and fortunately, everyone likes her candid critiques. Luke then introduces her to Janie Vertanen from Nokia and asks her to converse in Finnish, assuming that she is familiar with the language. However, she doesn't comprehend anything, so she simply slaps him in the face and calls him a pervert to end the conversation. Later, Luke approaches Rebecca with the good news that they have been invited as representatives to the Print Association charity party, putting them in a big league. Following this, both of them return back to New York, and one day, Luke meets Alicia Billington, an employee of Ella. Alicia is clearly attracted to Luke, but the latter pays no attention to it. Despite this, he accepts a dinner invitation when Alicia asks him. The next day, Rebecca takes Luke to a store to buy him some new clothes and get rid of his usual boring ones. There, Luke reveals that his mother is a New York socialite named Eleanor Sherman, 
He also reveals that his parents are divorced and that he grew up with his father, who was very down to earth and completely opposite to his mother. According to him, it was assumed that he would just fall into the family business, but he chose to thrive on his own terms. Hearing this, Rebecca, who has started falling for him, compliments him for being a workaholic and also suggests he start his own company. The same evening, they go for a drink at a bar and enjoy each other's company. On their way back to the hotel, they come across Alicia, who reminds Luke about the dinner. Seeing the two close, Rebecca assumes that they are dating and leaves the place upset. On her way back, Suze calls her, warning her not to enter the house by the front door since Derek Smith has arrived. Taking her advice, she enters the house through the back door and informs Suze that she requires an outfit for an upcoming party. Hearing this, Suze becomes worried and invites her to join a Shopaholic Anonymous class in order to control her shopping addiction. However, Rebecca inspires every Shopaholic in the class to shop more instead of controlling themselves, leaving the counselor annoyed. At the party, her outfit matches the waitress's, so the chef mistakes her for a waitress and asks her to serve the meal. Soon she becomes entangled, but Luke handles the situation wisely. After the party, Rebecca is on the roof when Luke approaches her. He clears the confusion by asserting that Alicia is not his girlfriend. He also expresses his true feelings for her, and as a result, they kiss. The next day, Rebecca notices a guy on her way to work, but she's not sure if it's Derek Smith. Rebecca and Derek are both in the same elevator when Rebecca decides to call Derek's number for confirmation. Soon after, the guy's phone rings, indicating that the guy is Derek indeed. But by that time, Derek also learns that she is the one he is looking for. Following that, Rebecca rushes out of the lift and enters the office, while Derek is stopped by the security guard outside. In the office, a woman named Naylor approaches Rebecca and informs her that she has been asked to promote the girl in the green scarf with her outfits for her television debut. Rebecca is hesitant at first, but when Naylor mentions that they'll go shopping, she immediately agrees. Meanwhile, an envious Alicia also joins them. At the store, Rebecca and Naylor do the shopping while Alicia is made to hold Rebecca's bag. Enraged, she throws the bag, but soon hears a phone ringing. On checking, she discovers the call is from Derek Smith and secretly answers it. Later, Susan and her mother take Rebecca to a store and select a gown for her. Turns out the occasion is Susan's wedding. Meanwhile, she notices Rebecca's new outfit and believes she's still overspending, so she sends her back to the Shopaholic Anonymous class. Rebecca is hesitant, but she has no choice but to agree. In the next scene, Rebecca meets Miss Corch, her new group leader, who forces her to donate her clothes, including the newly purchased bridesmaid gown for Susan's wedding and the dress for the TV interview. As soon as the class is finished, Rebecca returns to the same store where she donated all of her dresses and requests the shopkeeper to return some of them. Sadly, the shopkeeper refuses and Rebecca is forced to buy them again. When she proceeds to pay, she finds out that she cannot afford to buy both dresses. So she opts for the interview gown, leaving the bridesmaid's dress behind. The next day, Luke and Rebecca are conducting a live interview in front of a large audience. Unfortunately, Derek Smith is also in the audience and he suddenly confronts Rebecca. He reveals that he's been following her since last year in order to recover unpaid credit on a store card totaling $9,412 and a quarter. Hearing all this, Luke becomes enraged and storms out of the place. Rebecca follows him and tries explaining that she spent all her money shopping as it is the only thing that makes her feel happy. In the heat of the moment, she also admits that she joined Successful Saving solely to join Alette magazine. This disappoints Luke even more, and he exits the place heartbroken. To make matters worse, Rebecca is fired from Successful Saving following the public confrontation. On the other hand, Suze is enraged when she finds out Rebecca has given away the bridesmaid's gown. Rebecca now feels that she has let everyone down. Her father approaches her and consoles her by saying that the United States has not fallen despite its massive national debt. He also offers to sell his favorite vehicle to help his daughter pay off her debt. But Rebecca strictly declines, stating that it is the result of his hard work and savings. She then asserts that she will deal with her debt on her own. The following day, Naylor pays Rebecca a visit and offers her a position at Alet Magazine. Initially, Rebecca is excited to join Alette, but she also has an uneasy feeling that she shouldn't do it. After a lot of contemplating, she decides to reject Naylor's proposal, despite the fact that it is her dream. Meanwhile, Luke establishes his own firm with the name Brandon Communication. In the following scene, Rebecca decides to sell all of her clothes in order to pay off her debt. She seeks assistance from Shopaholic Anonymous members in this matter. All of them assist Rebecca in organizing a clothing sale, and soon, a large number of customers arrive. Luke's assistant also learns about the sale and decides to go after informing Luke about it. In the sale, Miss Corch also holds an auction for a green scarf, which is purchased for $300 by one of the bidders on the phone. Rebecca is hesitant to sell the green scarf, but she has no other choice. 
At the end of the day, she ends up making $16,586.72, more than enough to pay off her debt. However, she decides to pay Derek in pennies, making it extremely inconvenient for him. Following this, Rebecca retrieves her bridesmaid gown and attends Suze's wedding. She apologizes to Suze for her mistake, and the best friends are happily reunited. On her way back, she is tempted to buy outfits, but she resists, overcoming her shopaholic tendencies. She then encounters Luke, who returns the green scarf to her after revealing that the bidder on the phone was none other than himself. Finally, they sort out their fights and kiss each other. Rebecca then begins to work with Luke in his newly established company. As the movie ends, she feels that she is in love with someone who reciprocates her feelings and never declines her, as credit cards do.